So I want to talk a bit about a tool that I developed um, to generate some technical documentation of your um, power apps and um, power automate flows. So my name is Rene Modri. I'm actually an Office 365 for Office Apps and Service MVP since 2012, mostly working with Office 365, but to a good amount over the past few years than with the Power Platform, and that was growing a lot more. So right now I'm actually the Power Platform, technically the WPP, which means then that obviously I've been working with Power Apps and Power Automate relatively much, obviously. And um, one of those things that I've been looking at both from a professional point of view, but also from a personal point of view, because I developed obviously my own small helper apps and helper flows for smaller stuff. One of those things I looked at was how can I actually document what I've been doing? Because documentation is something that we've always been, well, everybody is usually struggling with. It's nice to build some awesome stuff. You build a nice new app, a great flow, etc. But when it comes to documenting it, nobody's really excited about doing it. Um, so a lot of times then you build something and then maybe you document it, but then you make some updates and uh, you might just get lazy because those changes you don't want to um, take care of uh, putting that into another document, etc. And basically, when we talk about documentation, it also means then that um, there are a couple of different um, components that should go into a documentation. I mean, from a professional point of view, you would need something like what's the world of project scope, what goes into that, uh, what you're actually trying to achieve, the business scenario, the use cases. You're talking about then tech from a technical point of view about the um, system architecture that you overall have, including any other systems. Maybe you're connecting to some databases, maybe to some other third party systems. Maybe you require a lot of different accounts, all those that kind of things that you obviously ideally want to document. Lastly, you've also got the deployment process and some de technical details and technical details really meaning whatever you're doing directly here, for example, in uh, Power Automate or Power Apps, then you might want to document that as well so that maybe you can hand it over to another team like a support team or so. So when they, for example, try to figure out why is the app not working, they've got something to fall back on that they can refer to so they get better understanding of how something is working because once you start looking at an app for the first time, obviously you might get overwhelmed with stuff. So my idea was basically, I should actually develop something that could help me with that. Uh, my idea was a lot of the things that get or should be documented need to be done manually, but documenting an app, specifically Canvas apps or documenting flow should be something that should be possible automatically. So by running it through a tool, I should be able to get a, um, in the end, uh, the idea was to get a Word document that then can be used for me to refer back to again when I want to figure out, oh, which variables did I have in that app? Where are they used, for example? Or how many actions are in a flow? What was the structure of the flow? Um, what am I doing in each step, etc. without having to go into the app or flow directly, but rather having that reference again. And yeah, that's basically what I then did. So I developed something. It's been around now for around half a year. Took some time to get it um, basically started, but um, was happy then to get something launched. And I think I'm just going to stop here with the slides and just going to switch over to my demo. So as mentioned, um, Todd just mentioned it is obviously open source. So it's on GitHub. Anybody can just come in here, look at the code that I've been doing. Anybody is free to contribute to it as well. This is where you can then also download the latest releases. Um, latest releases from February. I'm just preparing a newer one with some minor updates. But um, basically, I'm going to use the February release to show you what it actually can do. The idea is then, for example, just jumping, for example, into a flow. Let's say you've got a flow here. And uh, just looking at what we have here, let's just have a quick look at this uh, flow that I have here just to show you what um, how overall how it looks like, what it can do. Um, that's actually one of those default flows that's available out of the box, basically one of the templates. And all it does basically connects uh, on a regular basis. I think uh, yeah, once per week, for example, connects to your calendar, gets a calendar view of events, and basically does some checks and does some stuff and sends emails. Um, so roughly speaking, relatively straightforward. What I want to do now is I'm going to take this flow here and get it documented. So what I would have to do is simply say I want to export my flow. Um, create a package, a zip file, and this is the one that I can then run through PowerDocu. Now, switching over to PowerDocu, so that's the thing that you can download then from GitHub. Let me just actually just remember something. Um, what I usually do is um, I also 
can download the um, corresponding connector icon. So not just having the information around um, always using the Outlook connector and um, weather connector, but also using the icons. There's a small script that I can use in here to download the latest set of icons. So um, let's just finish that in the background. And let me just open here Power Doku GUI. So that's a small um, Windows application that I can use. Um, to basically select an app, a flow, or a whole solution that I want to document. Optionally, I can also select a Word tem template if I have something. So um, from a corporate point of view, you usually want to maybe use them something yeah, branded according to whatever your corporate branding guidelines are. But uh, if it's not selected, it will just create a blank document, which we'll just use here right now. So all I need to do is then I select my app or flow solution. Here are all the things that I exported before. So the full weather is basically the flow, the email meal with a list of upcoming calendar events that I actually exported previously. So I'm just going to take this one, going to select open and what Power Doku does basically it opens the file, it checks what's inside, it finds in this case, oh, there's actually a flow and basically creates the corresponding documentation. So this is the documentation that gets generated, gets put into its own folder. So I've got here one flow doc, email with lots of upcoming calendar events. And in here, then I've got a couple of files. So yes, I also add the icons here, but more important, that's what we actually all want to see is, first of all, I've got here some, uh, um, again, the flow charts of the flow. So if I take, for example, a detailed flow, open the SVG, we can see then, then, oh, that's actually just exactly that flow that we just looked at here. So really, um, again, some something graphical that gets exported. So often when you want to, for example, take your flow, you might edit it. You want to take a screenshot. Oh, yeah, I'm going to zoom out a lot, for example, to see it all because it's quite big when I extend it, etc. I'm simply set doing something very similar here. And we can see also then the corresponding icons, if available, are also shown here, for example. So I can see here is the weather, the calendar, etc. So that's one thing. So I've got the available SVG file and the PNG file, but I've also got here my Word document. And that's the thing we want to have a quick look at. So the Word document then contains a documentation about the flow, including, for example, the overview of, again, for example, what I just generated here, but also some information. Let me just zoom out a bit about the connectors that are getting used. So in that case, we've got three connectors. The variables that are getting used, for example, so I can see from the the body to send variables, calendar events variable, etc. How they are initialized, so I can see body to send is empty, calendar events, okay, there's an object, there's a structure here, but also empty. And more important than also, I can see where those variables are used. So if I want to figure out a specific variable in a flow, where is it getting used? I could run it through PowerDocu and then basically get that information. Oh, in these actions, that's where I'm setting basically or updating or initializing this particular variable. So that's a very neat thing that can help you, especially when you've got a very large flow and want to figure out a specific variable, where is it in use? That's where I can figure it out. Lastly, then obviously, I'm also documenting the trigger. When does the flow start? So all the technical details. We saw that's a, a recurrence um, kind of trigger in that case, and it's uh, running once a week, plus all the actions. So the actions are sorted alphabetically. So again, basically, a uh, document the name, the type, what kind of um, type of action is it, and then further details depending on obviously um, what's available as part of the action. So append to a array variable, so we can see yeah, there's some details here. So if I look at it, I can figure out, okay, that's probably the variable and I'm appending, for example, this part here, something like that. Let's check actually, for example, create HTML table. We can then see um, some other information here provided plus also then, for example, if there's anything added here, um, sorry, anything added here, um, it also provides me information about which action actually comes next as well. So just some general information. And uh, yeah, you can see basically it tries to document it as much as possible. Often you also then get some very, obviously very, uh, yeah, technical details in here. So if I go into the app and uh, into the flow, sorry, and look directly in the flow, for example, what kind of calendar ID is it querying here? I would say probably in a nicer way, but at least basically I get all the details done in here um, as needed. 
Now that's for flows. Now for apps, I can do exactly the same thing. So ideas, same things. You take an app, doesn't matter which one, you export the package, and then you've got again something that you can run through PowerDocu. So I'm just gonna take, for example, the um, Pony Math app, an app that I developed for my kids, and that was one of the reasons why I thought I should start documenting stuff again, um, because sometimes I need to update it, and after months of not doing anything with it, I obviously forgot most of what I did before. So taking this exported app here, I can then do the same thing. In that case, it discovers it actually contains a, um, an app in here. It creates the documentation as well again. And let me just jump back into this folder. We see again another generated folder. In this case, there are no flow charts right now, but we've got two Word documents. So one that contains, uh, you could say, an overview, plus one that is more detailed. And I'm just going to open the more detailed one. Even though it's large, it contains basically a lot more information. So again, documenting it on what I can get about that app. So for example, some general app properties. So I can see, for example, yeah, oh, phone type is, um, um, sorry, app type is for the phone. Um, it's in landscape mode, those kind of things. Um, I can also see some so-called preview flags. So for example, some of those um, preview functionalities, um, for example, delay load screens is set to true. So I know, for example, this was, um yeah loading screens basically um as required um more important than also moving on to variables and collections similar to what we've seen just now with the flows i also document then the variables that i can discover and the collections and i'm also trying to document then where they are used as much as possible that's a more of a tricky thing so um there may be sorry there may be instances where it's not getting discovered but most of the time I can figure out where a specific variable is getting used. So you also have that easy overview. That's now also directly in the AppMaker Studio directly, luckily, where I can see your variables and where they are used. But previously I tried to figure that out myself then here. Documenting also the data sources. So we can see then what kind of data sources are in use. So you can see there are two samples and two normal collections basically and the resources that are in the app. So if there are any resources, either it's URLs, images, PDF, videos, some documenting them in here as well. Also adding the images as possible, if you can see. So then basically providing just some information about it. So we can yeah, just have some additional information here as required. Moving on, uh, more important than obviously we want to see a list of the controls. So that's basically again, imitating what we have in the Maker Studio. So um, I've got a list of the different screens plus then the different controls located in that screen. So, so I can see in that coin screen, I've got some buttons, I've got galleries, some images, etc., And I've got some other screens here as well. Then now the detail part is for each control that is in the app. So every single control, I also document them basically all the properties. And that's obviously in very detailed. So every single property that I know about that we can discover here, is also documented in here as well. Sometimes that may be something that's, I don't know, potentially set to the default value right now, but other times then it might be something that we are, for example, um, I don't know, setting manually or basically where we then define a specific value. That's also getting all in here. Plus I'm also, for example, showing the colors here, making it a bit easier than, for example, to have an overview if I want to figure out, oh, um, let me just zoom out a bit. Um, where do I use colors and what kind of colors? I can see here yeah, there are some instances of some pink and blue, etc. So that's all in there. Plus, um, let me zoom back in again. Uh, basically, then that's all then in here. So really, the idea is then every single thing gets documented, including then. So just looking for something like this here, for example, any function calls. That's obviously the important part. Sometimes you want to see where do I use a certain function. So if I want to figure out where do I do a maybe a navigate, I could try to find it directly in here and I can then uh, see, okay, um, folks, I'm on the on select for image four, I'm doing a navigate plus everything else that I'm doing. Um, yeah, and that's basically what um, PowerDocu does. Separately, I could also run it against the whole solution. For example, here we can see the um, Power App Center of Excellence. I can now also run it against this whole thing here, which contains a couple of apps, a couple of flows, and you would document each and every single one of them accordingly then as well, just as we've seen so far. Yeah, and that's the idea. So if you want to test it out, um, just go to PowerDocu um, on GitHub, um, try it out. If you've got any feedback, questions, recommendations, 
just add your comments over there as well. Happy to always then um, yeah, make sure that uh, things get better over time as well. Yeah, and that's the end of my demo, basically. That's fantastic. For over a decade, I've seen you do awesome things one time after another on your blog, and, and uh, it's cool to see you're still doing cool things with tech. Well done. Yeah. You're going to save all of us a ton of time. That's for sure. I've got yeah. a couple quick questions. A lot of people are asking if it works with the solution. As you mentioned, that does work. Yeah. If you do have a solution, did you mention that you're showing so many things? Did you mention if it has environment variables it documents as well? No, not yet. It's one of the things I'm, uh, I'm uh, thinking of adding in a future release, but so far I didn't get to that point yet. So obviously for okay. solution, I'm only documenting apps or Canvas apps and flows, nothing else yet, but um, yeah. yeah. Definitely room for uh, improvement there and um, variables, environment variables are one of those things that are probably very high on my list to get added soonest. Is action notes also one of the things on that list too? Yeah. That, that uh, new commenting functionality. <laughs> the more I think about it, yeah, that list probably gets longer. That's how it can be documented. It could, you should be, yeah. <laughs> What's your best practice if you if you rev a version of a uh, uh, a solution? Do you just go regenerate the whole thing and throw away the old stuff it generated and use the new docs? Yeah, depends. I mean, okay. that's obviously I'm not describing to anyone how to use it. From a personal point of view, whenever you create a new version of, for example, a new solution, I just regenerate it again and maybe yeah. keep the old artifacts just to make sure then that um, yeah we've cut it all together, but. Um, the idea is that you always got one working latest version with whatever is currently the latest version of your solution or app or flow. That makes sense. Fantastic. Well, yeah. thanks again for sharing that. That wrapped up all the open questions yeah. I saw yeah. as I was I was looking through yeah. them. There might be some more in chat for you there. Yeah. Uh, here well, in a I'm little. Still going to be around. Thanks for a again. While. Great yeah. job for that. And I can't wait to go try it out myself tonight. That's awesome. Come back and join us again sometime, Renee. That was really nice. Thank <laughs> you.